Welcome everybody to a look at a new Radiance Films release. This is number 39 in their collection and it is 1966's Tokajiro Lone Yakuza. So this is directed by Tai Kaito, who we've talked about before with the likes of I the Executioner and 18 Years in Prison. So by the title, you've probably already recognised the fact that it's a Yakuza film and it clocks in at 90 minutes long. Stars Kinesuke Nakamura, uh, who was in the likes of The Revenge and The Fall of Ico Castle. He was the lead in those two films and the lead in this film. So, weary of the rigid codes of the underworld, gambler Tokajiro wanders Japan in search of freedom. But escape proves to be impossible when an obligation to a gang boss leaves him with no choice but to kill a man. To atone for his crime, he vows to take care of his victim's widow and her young son. But the gang won't rest until they've killed the entire family, including the man who stands in their way. So this is an uh, as excellent as the action and violence are in this Yakuza film. This is able to set itself apart from similar efforts thanks to the well-executed characterization, the character interactions between the leads, and dramatic aspects that underpin all of those action scenes. The cast is also great. It is well-paced. The period production is convincing. The score is really rather well done. The cinematography is on point, especially when it comes to the frenetic action scenes, and it is overall engrossing. And uh, yeah, like I said, the fact this is also well executed, and that's because it's really well a blood spurty, a lot like the like anime films in terms of that regard. So uh, yeah, really rather well done in all of that as well. So uh, yeah, you can get plenty out of this film. You can get it in out of the dramatic aspects, but there's also plenty of action to uh, satisfy you in that regard. And uh, yeah. Nice coloured printed disc again. We also get the reversible sleeve artwork. Which I actually get like a bit more. I think this new artwork looks a bit too modern for its own good, to be honest. So, uh, yeah. But it's still a uh, decent enough artwork. Then we get a booklet as well. Banana reverse, really. Uh, and inside the booklet, we get your usual cast and crew. Then we get Dark Blue with Splashes of Red from 2024 by Ivo Smits. Then we get a review of Tokajiro Along the Accuser from 1966 by Tetsuo Fukusawa. And then we get Transfer Notes and Credits. So this was transferred in high definition by Toei Co. Limited and supplied to Radiance Films as a high definition digital transfer or digital file even. So uh, yeah. It looks fairly good in terms of the transfer, to be honest, or the, the file that they've been provided. And yeah, you get uncompressed mono PCM audio alongside this, as well as an interview with film critic Kuishi Ueno uh, about the film's place in genre cinema history. That's from 2024, clocking in at 17 minutes long. Then we get Young Master, a visual essay on star Kinesuke uh, Nakamura's, uh, Nakamura by Japanese cinema expert Robin Gatto. That's from 2024 as well, and that clocks in at 18 minutes long. We also get a trailer, which is a newly cut trailer for 2024, uh, and new and improved English subtitle translation, and all of the physical aspects that I've shown you already. And the new artwork is by Time Tomorrow. No idea who that is. But still, the film itself is fantastic. Four and a half stars out of five from me, which ranks right alongside I, the Executioner, for my current favourites uh, from Tai Kaito. So uh, yeah, another brilliant effort from uh, the director and another excellent release from Radiance Films. Um, the sound quality and the picture are also perfect. So even though it's only a digital file, you know, it's not a uh, new transfer, it's not been done in 2K or 4K or anything like that. It still looks great. It still sounds really rather good as well. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, the film itself is really rather excellent and uh, highly, highly recommend it if you're into your Yakuza films. Especially if you're into your more, you know, period drama Yakuza films. Because obviously a lot of Yakuza films were set in the time that they were made. Especially the 60s and 70s ones. So, uh, yeah, to get a, uh, you know, a film from the 60s but set many, many years beforehand is uh, really rather nice. And uh, to have it done as well as it is, is also a bonus. So, uh, yeah, but nonetheless, thank you for watching. If you have seen this film before, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. But uh, anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.